Welcome to my lecture online. Now that we have an equation for the pressure or for the atmospheric pressure as a function of height, let's try to figure out what the atmospheric pressure is on top of two famous mountains. Now, one mountain is, of course, a lot more famous than the other. We have Mount Everest, the highest mountain in the world at 8,848 meters. And then we have the highest mountain in the continental United States, which is in California here, Mount Whitney, at 4,421 meters roughly 14,500 feet. All right, what would be the air pressure on top of those two mountains? Let's first start with Mount Whitney. And of course, on the last video, we got this equation where the pressure as a function of height was equal to the atmospheric pressure at sea level times e to the minus mg divided by rt times y, y being the height. So how do we do that? Well, let's plug in the numbers and see what we get. So the pressure, when y is equal to the height would be equal to 4,421 meters is equal to one atmosphere, atmospheric pressure at sea level, times e to the minus the mass of one mole, which is roughly 0.029 kilograms. So we convert that into, um, uh, well, that was 29 grams, which is 0 0.029 kilograms. G, the acceleration due to gravity, 9.8. Now, I realize that on top of a mountain, G will be slightly less, but it's not a lot of difference from there. R is the gas constant at 8.315. And then the temperature, let's say the temperature on top of Mount Everest is 0 degrees centigrade, right about the freezing point, uh, I meant Mount Whitney. Freezing point would be 273 Kelvin. And of course, then we need to put in the height. Y would be 4,421 meters. So let's see what the atmospheric pressure is on top of Mount Whitney. And by the way, I have been on top of that mountain. That was a long time ago when I was a lot younger. Anyway, 0 0.029 times 9.8 times 44.21 divided by 8.315, divided by 273, put a negative in front of that, make that the exponent of E, and it looks like on top of Mount Whitney, the pre uh, yeah, Mount Whitney, the pressure at Y equals 4,421 meters is equal to 0 0.575 times the atmospheric pressure. So, we're at about 57, 58% of atmospheric pressure when you're on top of Mount Whitney. Now it gets worse than that when you get on top of Mount Everest. So let's take a look and see what that is. Now, of course, the only difference is everything will be the same, well, except for the height and the temperature because it's a lot colder up there. So let's say that the pressure on top of Mount Everest, which is 8,848 meters, is going to be equal to one atmosphere, multiply times e to the minus, the mass still be 0 0.029 for one mole of air, 9.8, which of course on top of Mount Everest, it's more like 9.7 something, uh, divided by 8.315, the gas constant, and the temperature, let's say that it's about 23 degrees below zero centigrade, that would put it at about 250, and then the height would be 8,848. All right, so let's see what the air pressure is like on top of Mount Everest on a typical day. Not probably a typical summer day. All right, 0 0.029 times 9.8 times 88, 48, divided by 8.315, divided by... 250 equals, put a negative in front of that, e to the x, and that would be about 34%. So that would be equal to 0 0.34 atmospheres. So there the atmospheric pressure is down to about a third of what you have at sea level. Of course, these are theoretical numbers. The actual numbers may vary slightly. Uh, when you get on top of that mountain, but I'm going to check one more time, 0 0.029. And, ah, I get a different result. I get something like this. It's always good to check the numbers because you never know when you plug in the wrong number, 298. So it's actually less than a third. 
it's about 30%. So you can see that on top of Mount Everest, the air pressure is about 30% of sea level. On top of Mount Whitney, it's about 58% of sea level. And so that's not quite as bad, but it's pretty tough when you get to the elevation because you don't have a lot of air. And that's how we know.